Let's talk about the primary trigonometric ratios, or you might just hear them be called the primary trig ratios. And the most common way you'll see this expressed is S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. And your teachers might tell you the story about SOHCAHTOA, and that's just a method to memorize what these uh, acronyms are, or what these letters stand for. And that's all useful, that's great. If you find that to be helpful, you can absolutely memorize it and remember these. Um, not gonna lie, that's how I remembered them when I was learning this, that's absolutely okay. Um, but you should know what each of these represents, right? So if you have a triangle, it has to be a right angle triangle, of course. Um, and you have an angle here, we'll call that angle theta, right? Sometimes they use X, I'll use theta. Well, this long length over here, across from your 90 degrees, is your hypotenuse. So I'll just write HYP, hypotenuse. And then this side over here is opposite to your angle, right? Like if you're at your angle and you look across the triangle, you get to this side. So that's your opposite side. And then this length on the bottom is what you would call the adjacent side. So I'll just write ADJ for adjacent, because that's the side that's right next to the angle. This side is as well, but that's the hypotenuse. So we call that the hypotenuse. So this is your adjacent side. Now, what does it mean, you know, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A? Well, the S-O-H, the S stands for sine. And you've probably seen these buttons on your calculator, but you weren't really sure what they do. Sine is a function that you can apply to theta. And so if you take sine of theta, what that is going to give you when you plug this in is the ratio of the opposite length to the hypotenuse length. So opposite divided by hypotenuse. That's why SOH, right? Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So if you have an angle here, and it's a very, very small angle, right? Like if it's a very, very skinny sliver of a triangle like that, and you take the sine of that angle, well, the opposite is very small over hypotenuse. So you're going to get a sine value that's very, very tiny, right? And so if you have a very tiny sine value, what that means is your triangle is very, very short, like this. But if it's very, very tall, like this, and you take the sine value of this angle, you get opposite, which is pretty big, right? It's almost the same as hypotenuse, so it's almost gonna be one, because the opposite will be just a little smaller than the hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse is always the longest side no matter what. So if your triangle is very tall like this, then the sine of this angle would be a number that's very close to one, like maybe like 0.99 or something like that, right? Whereas if it's a short triangle like this, your sine value would be very close to zero, like 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or something like that, right? So the closer the number is to one, when you take the sine, it means the longer that side is, right? But if it's a very short height like this one, you'll get a very small value. So when people say, you know, sine of an angle doesn't really mean anything, it's just something made up. No, it's the ratio of two sides of the triangle, okay? The same is true for these other ones. Uh, CAH, that stands for cos of theta, being equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So now it's comparing the length on the bottom, right, the base. So if you took cos of this angle uh, in this drawing here, you would get a very large value for cos because the adjacent side is almost as long as hypotenuse. So cos of theta in that case would be a number very close to one, right? It would almost be one because the adjacent side is very close to the hypotenuse. But if you look at this triangle and you took cos of the angle on the bottom here, you'd have a very small adjacent side. So a very small side divided by a very long hypotenuse, you would get a number close to zero, right? So cos and sine kind of work the opposite. If it's a very tall triangle, the sine is big, but the cos is small. If it's the opposite, right, if it's a short triangle, then the sine is small and the cos is big, right? So the cos and sine just represent the ratio of either of these lengths compared to your hypotenuse. Now tan is kind of a special one because tan doesn't use the hypotenuse. Tan theta is simply equal to opposite over adjacent. So it's TOA, opposite over adjacent. And so what does that represent? Well, if you have a triangle like this, and you have a particular angle, and you have your opposite, and you have your adjacent, this should look familiar to you, and it might not look familiar right now, but when I point it out, I think it will. If you have a line, like your hypotenuse here, and you measure the height, and you divide that by the length, isn't that just doing rise over run? Isn't that just finding your slope? It kind of is, right? So for a particular angle theta here, if you take the tan of that angle, what it's going to give you is the slope of this line. 
and that's why you may have heard the term tangent line before as referring to the slope of something um, because when you take the tan of an angle you're really getting the slope of that angle right so instead of doing rise over run you can just measure the angle take the tan of that angle and you will be given the slope so that's kind of a cool thing that they might not tell you right away but it's going to come into play later on for now what you want to do though is just remember these three ratios right you want to remember those three and if you want to use Sokotoa up here to help you remember that's absolutely okay now let's do some examples let's say I'm given a triangle that looks something like this and it's a right angle triangle and I know my angle here is theta and I'm also given the lengths of all these sides this is three this is four this is five and I'm asked to find all the primary trig ratios so they want me to find sine of theta they want me to find cos of theta and they want me to find tan of theta this is what you do if they ask you to find all the primary trig ratios this is what you do so sine of theta is what well sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse so 4 over 5 cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so 3 over 5 and tan of theta is opposite over adjacent so 4 over 3 another way to remember this you might have heard the phrase cos is close because for cos you use the side that is close to your angle so you might hear people say cos is close you might use that when it comes to your work in other math courses or if you take physics um, that's just another way to remember that cos uses the adjacent side and then sine uses you know the other one right the opposite so if you hear that and you want to use that to help you remember that's absolutely okay um, now what if they ask you what the angle is right like they say hey what's theta equal to how would we find that well you can use any one of these ratios you want let's say we use sine theta so sine theta equals 4 over 5 and you can use your calculator for this I want to isolate for theta so I have to get rid of the sine well the sine's not it looks like it's being multiplied but it's not really being multiplied right you're taking the sine of theta and so the way you get rid of sine is you apply the sine inverse to both sides and the sine inverse is a function on your calculator that you can use so if you take the sine inverse of both sides these signs cancel and you're left with theta so theta equals sine inverse of 4 over 5. So you go on your calculator, you might have to hit second or shift, and then hit the sine button, and that gives you the sine inverse function. And then you put in 4 over 5, and it should give you an answer of 53.13 degrees approximately, right? So that's how you can find theta if you have any of the trig ratios. And again, you could use cos, you could use tan, or you could use sine to figure that out. Sometimes it just depends on what you're given, right, which sides you have. Let's do another example. Let's say I have a triangle like this, and that's 90 degrees. That's theta, that's seven, and this is three. And let's say I wanna find the angle theta. How would I find the theta? Well, I have to use one of those trig ratios, either sine, cos, or tan. And it's gonna depend on what sides I have, right? Here I have the opposite side and the adjacent side, right? Because three is opposite from the angle and seven is right adjacent to the angle. So that tells me I should use tan. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, 3 over 7. So whenever you are given a triangle and you don't have all the sides, you think, okay, what sides do I have? Opposite, adjacent, and then you think through Sokotoa, which one has those two sides? And of course, it's the tan, right? Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Uh, therefore, theta is equal to the tan inverse of 3 over 7. And you can use your calculator to figure that out. You'll get approximately 23.2 degrees. And that's it. Let's do another one. Let's say I have a triangle that looks something like this. So that's 90 degrees. Um, this side over here is 4, this side is 1, and this is my theta. And same question, solve for theta. So what sides do I have? Well, I have the opposite side, and I have the hypotenuse, right? So I could say I'm going to use sine, because sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or 1 over 4. Therefore, theta is equal to sine inverse 1 over 4. Use your calculator, type that in, and you get theta is equal to 14.5 degrees approximately. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say I have a triangle looks like this, where this is 90 degrees. Um, but in this case, I'm going to be given the angle. I'll be told it's 30 degrees and I have this length here is 10 
and then I have the opposite side over here, and I don't know what the opposite side is. And let's say the question is asking me to find the opposite side. What would I do? Well, I have to look at what sides are involved in this question. I have the 10, which is the adjacent, and I'm looking for opposite. So I want to use the trig ratio that uses the opposite and the adjacent, which is tan, right? So tan of the angle, which I have, right? It's 30 degrees. Tan of 30 equals opposite over adjacent, so opposite over 10. So now the thing I'm looking for is the opposite, so I just have to isolate that. Um, just get rid of the 10 by multiplying 10 to both sides. So 10 tan 30 degrees equals the opposite. You can plug this into your calculator. Just type in 10 tan 30, and you're going to get as an answer your opposite side is equal to approximately 5.8. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say I have a triangle like this. Um, this is 40 degrees, this is 90, this is my hypotenuse, that's what I'm going to be looking for, and this length over here is 15. So this question says find the hypotenuse. Okay, so I have the opposite, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So it looks like for this one, I'm going to have to use sine, right? Sine of the angle, so sine of 40, equals opposite over hypotenuse, so 15 over hypotenuse. Solve for the hypotenuse, how do I do that? Well. I can multiply both sides by the hypotenuse to get it to the top, and then divide both sides by sine 40 to get hypotenuse by itself, right? So multiply both sides by hypotenuse, those would cancel. I'm left with hypotenuse times sine 40 equals 15. Then divide both sides by sine 40, so you get hypotenuse by itself equals 15 over sine 40. A nice trick instead of doing all that work is if you have a number equals a fraction, these two terms can just switch places. Right, because if you had, for example, you know, 10 equals 20 divided by 2, you could also say that 2 is equal to 20 divided by 10, right, just as a little side note there. So in algebra, you can always swap those two numbers, right, and it's still true. So if you're isolating something and you have, you know, a number equals a fraction, you can always swap those two terms. So if you do that for this question, you can get to this step a lot sooner. Anyway, hypotenuse equals 15 over sine 40. So Plug that into your calculator, 15 divided by sine of 40, and you should get 23.3 approximately. That's the length of your hypotenuse. And it's always okay to take a look and say, okay, my hypotenuse should be my longest side, so make sure that it's longer than at least the other side that you have. 23 is bigger than 15, so my answer makes sense. Let's look at one last one. Let's say I have this triangle here, 90 degrees. This is my opposite side. This is 20 degrees. This is my adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is 12. And let's say they want me to find both the opposite and the adjacent. So to find the opposite, I have the hypotenuse, so I want the function or the ratio that has the hypotenuse and the opposite. That would be sine. So sine 20 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply by 12, you get 12. Sine 20 degrees equals the opposite and therefore your opposite is equal to, you plug that into your calculator, and you should get 4.1 approximately. So that's the height here, that's your opposite side. Then you want to find the adjacent, so you have to figure out uh, which trig ratio uses adjacent in hypotenuse, and that should be cos, right? Cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, multiplied by 12, 12 cos 20 degrees equals the adjacent Therefore, the adjacent side is equal to, if you calculate this, you get 11.3 approximately. So this is 11.3, and the opposite is 4.1. And you can confirm that this makes sense, like I said before, because your hypotenuse should be the longest side, and the shortest side should be across from your smallest angle, right? The reason the hypotenuse is the biggest side is because it's across from the biggest angle, 90 degrees. And I say 90 is the biggest angle because all three angles in a triangle need to add up to 180. So this is already 90. You're not going to get another angle that's bigger than 90, right? Because 90 is already half of 180. So what's this angle over here if they all add up to 180? Well, this is 90. This is 20. So this must be 70. 70 plus 20 plus 90 equals 180. So the biggest side, 12, is across from the biggest angle, 90. The smallest side, 4.1, is across from the smallest angle, 20. And then the length that's not quite the longest, not quite the shortest, the one in the middle, 11.3, is across from the angle that's also right in the middle, right? 70 is between 20 and 90 degrees. 
so that makes sense. So with all that being said, you should be confident in your final answer.